Hello everyone, and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore episode 17. This is the series where the most important thing is that we do not die. So we're building a castle around a village and it's a lot of fun and we have a lot of iron golems. When did we get so many iron golems actually? This is, seems excessive. Oh, <laughs> hello. Um, excuse you. Thanks to the YouTube and Twitch comments, I have started mining my fields with Fortune 3, which apparently does actually work. <laughs> I don't know why, but we are indeed going to be rich, so I'm not complaining about that. Right, let's start off this episode with a little bit of trading so that we can flex how rich we are, because, you know, we got to. It's just a thing. Farmers, where are you? Are you in the bakery? Oh, yes, look at... No, you're not farmers. All right, we'll go in. We'll go in. It's fine. Take the back. Hello! Can I do some trading with you? Thank you, you're sold out already. Okay, cool. It appears the villagers are going to bed. I did add some beds, by the way. I added one up here. I added um, one to this room right here. I added one to the stonemason's house, which I also started a little bit of an interior on. Like, not a lot, but it, and it's not nothing, <laughs> so there's that. It at least doesn't look insane on the inside. And I also added a bed to the library, and speaking of bed, we do need to sleep. Now I just need my carrot farmer, and speaking of carrot farmer, I do think it is about time that we actually name our carrot farmer, but I need a name tag for that. Do you sell name tags? You sure do, thank you so much. I've decided that our carrot farmer is going to be named Carl, so it just makes sense. Hello? You are Pierre. Okay, where is... You're our carrot farmer. Wow, look at you go. Thank you. You're gonna make us rich. Carl. <laughs> it's a perfect name. All right, look at that. Look at those emeralds. Oh my gosh, I'm so pleased with how we're progressing in this world. We're literally rich. We have anything that we could possibly want, and it's all because of these glorious villagers. Although, I will admit, we're missing a couple of things. And one of those is actually books mending. So I've got an extra lectern in here and I've placed extra beds. So with any luck, the villagers should start, you know, intermingling. We get some babies around here and then hopefully they'll take up the job in the library with any luck. Just to make sure they get the point, let me chuck some potatoes at them. Do you want some? Oh no, that's rude. That, that, come on. Does anybody want my potatoes? There we go. Okay, perfect. Iron golem. You scale in the walls, very cool, I like it. Since we've got all of these emeralds that we can flex on everyone with, I feel it's also important that we buy some more of these pickaxes. Because these two pickaxes are important. They're my silk touch one and my fortune one, and I don't want to break them randomly. So I'm gonna head over to the toolsmith, and as you can see, we have sort of free random pickaxes. Like we can get as many of these as we want, and we can sort of unenchant them or randomly enchant them and kind of get better just a work pick going, because we kind of need a general work pick. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the enchantment off of one of these. And let's just see what we get. Efficiency, that's pretty good, okay. And a book, we have piercing, fire protection. All right, let's go with the efficiency. Oh my gosh, we got another silk touch pickaxe. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. That's really good luck. So the reason that I decided to do this was actually because I don't want to waste these two pickaxes. I like them and we don't have mending yet. So it's important that I have sort of these burner picks that I can use and because we can get them free from emeralds, that's kind of the best case scenario for me to do, I think. This entire area is looking absolutely amazing. I love how everything is set up around here and I'm so happy with how the world is coming together. We are literally rich. We have everything that we could ever want from these villagers, an infinite supply inside these very safe walls. However, there is one major upgrade that we are indeed lacking. And sadly, it does involve going to the nether. We need to upgrade this beautiful, shiny, blue diamond gear that I have on into netherite. And I don't think that we're going to be able to do it all at once, but it would be lovely to get a little start and see if we can't get any collected. So that's the purpose of me making these sort of burner picks. Granted, this is a really good pick, but I want to get picks that I'm buying from the villagers that don't cost me any diamonds so that I can go burn them away in the nether, basically. I know that you can mine netherite with TNT, but it's a very um, <laughs> explosive way to get things. And I really enjoy just heading down to Y11 
and just, just mining it. This pick is very, very fast, and it should be no problem to do that. We are gonna have to make it safely to Y level 15 for this though, which I don't love. I don't love that at all. Okay, we have our very first lava. I feel like this is gonna be a pool of lava. Oh dear. Almost there, 18, 17, 15, right here. Okay, this level is the level that I am going to literally just speed mine. It's really easy, you get efficiency on a pickaxe, and you can just kind of blow through all of this. I am not in quite an ideal biome for this, but we should be able to blast through this basalt delta pretty quickly and get into biomes that are a little better for mining. The main thing is that we're doing it at this level where it spawns most commonly. Oh, and there we go. There's our very first piece that literally took no time. Let me show you, look at this. Look at this. This is our staircase <laughs> right down. And that is our very first ancient debris. Oh my gosh <laughs> there we go hidden in the depths let me make sure there's not a second one yeah i think we're okay so it's just one piece you need four pieces in order to upgrade a piece of armor but it's a very very good start if i do say so myself i think my toolsmith will be absolutely thrilled also love how much quartz we're getting because as you know we do need that for comparators and we also use it in the windmill to build so just good to have I love how many of these darker blocks we're collecting as well, although unintentionally, it's kind of going to be really useful for the castle wall and the castle keep. Basalta looks so pretty. Finally broken into some netherrack, which is much better for mining. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so quick. It's so fun. Such satisfying mining. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I could do this all day. The quartz keeps kind of teasing me a little bit, not going to lie. So we are in the biome nether wastes right now, which I think is about where I would like to stay for most of this mining. Oh, here's another piece. Oh, two pieces. Perfect, yes. And you know we gotta take a screenshot of it for the thumbnail. Okay, so now we should just need one more piece and then I think we can kind of smelt these down and upgrade one piece of our gear. That's a really exciting. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be doing this so early. I know that this is not at all early in the game for some people, but for me, I normally would never rush into this, but I just felt like it today, and I've had a lot of fun actually just mining. No, 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 I'm all right. Thank you, jeez. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Gosh, it moves so fast. Oh boy, okay, there's a lot of lava this way. I think we're gonna go this way. <gasps> more, 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 yes! <laughs> this is the last piece that we need. Oh my gosh. I feel like we've gotten so lucky. Okay, that is four pieces. That, my goal today was to get four pieces. And we did it. I've been recording for 22 minutes, so that's not bad. I mean, four pieces in 22 minutes is not great. But in my defense, I had to like get here and I tunneled through a bunch of basalt, which doesn't actually have any netherite in it. So I feel like we did pretty good. And we used a bunch of durability on this burner pick. Yeah, this was a really long tunnel. <laughs> My bad, maybe I should have came down in a different spot. Either way though, let's head back to the surface and see what we can do with this. And of course, it looks like it is just getting nighttime. Or is it just getting daytime? Oh, it's just getting daytime. Wow, switching it up, okay. Okay, now can you smelt this in a normal furnace? I forget, you can. Perfect, okay. Okay, there we go. Our netherite scrap is being created. So the next thing that we need to do is figure out what exactly we should upgrade. Thinking the sword, obviously, get some offense. Is offense the best defense? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, not sure. We also have the option of our armor. So my best armor right now is definitely my boots. I don't have the fire protection maxed out on them, but they're pretty good boots. My leggings are not great. My chest plate is okay. I don't love the thorns. And eh, my helmet kind of sucks. I need respiration. I need unbreaking. I need better protection. So in general, I think it's between boots and sword because I do want to change. So somebody in my comments told me that the best protective armor is actually armor with all of the different protections on it. So like fire protection, regular protection, blast protection, and then projectile protection. 
So I think my goal with my armor in this hardcore series is going to be to test that out because I do like that idea. Like I do kind of want projectile protection because for the raid we're going to be against pillagers which fire projectiles. Fire protection is great for the nether, regular protection is just good in general, and blast protection will be amazing for the dragon and the wither. I think the dragon does blast. Maybe just the wither, not sure. Either way though, you get what I'm saying. I wanna have like a really good solid set of armor. So we gotta try to work on the enchants before we do that. Maybe we could do that now actually. So let's think for a moment about what enchants we are actually aiming for. So my boots are fire protection, that's great. Maybe my helmet can be projectile protection and then we do regular protection on the leggings and blast protection on, actually this already has protection for. Let's try to do blast protection on our diamond leggings then. That could be good. Oh, you're offering a poppy. That was very cute. That was adorable. I liked that. Hello, you, ah. Oh. Actually, these already have blast protection on them. That's interesting. The problem is it's blast protection too, which is not ideal. Why do the leggings cost more than... Why are you the way that you are? I know this is counterproductive, but I am gonna unenchant these. We're gonna try to manually get some good enchants on them. So, books don't have anything. And just unbreaking through the pants. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. That's never happened to me before. Okay, so fire protection, blast protection, regular protection, projectile protection. Don't have it yet, but cool. All right, so that's the plan for the gear. Oh, I need a little bit of gold so that I can turn this netherite scrap into a proper ingot. Almost forgot that step, not gonna lie. There we go, here's my gold and netherite ingot. Bam, <laughs> nailed it. Okay, and since my boots are currently my proudest piece of armor, I am gonna go ahead and upgrade those first. Bam, netherite boots, <laughs> heck yeah. They look so cool. <laughs> I can't wait to get the rest of it upgraded, but I think this is a very good step in the correct direction. And I also feel a lot better about at least having one blast protection four piece. Like, I feel like that advice was good. That comment made sense. I hope that I'm not going crazy, but you know, it just, it feels right. Armor upgrades aside, I feel like it's finally time for us to work on some more transformations within this village. And we have a few buildings left. Um, we have four, we have this one right here this one right here and then the blacksmith as well as the little inn where i have everyone's beds i'm also probably going to transform my home again just to fit <laughs> with like the wall and everything but for now let's focus on the villagers a little bit more and there's someone who particularly needs something well to be honest all of the villagers need a home but this this is a job stand <laughs> and it's it's on the grass like you know the blacksmith is not great but at least it looks like a blacksmith. Like our poor cleric is just, I mean, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is not gonna work. This houses two beds and also an empty chest. I'm gonna go ahead now and take down this building and see if we can get in a foundation for a better home. I'm actually really excited for this transformation in particular because this one is right next to the bakery and this has so far been my absolute favorite area. I feel like completing this build will really kind of tie together the entire thing. Oh dear. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this feels a bit intrusive, right? I'll go to bed. I love how excited they are to just not use the door. Like you, you were generally... Like look at them. Look at, look at this. Did you want to be able to jump over? Do you like that? Yeah? You want to be able to leave? <laughs> They're so funny. Why do you just love not using doors? The look of concern I'm getting from Barbara right now. Girl, I promise I'm going to put this back, okay, Barbara? I pinky promise. You, you go over in the bakery with Pierre and Carl. It'll all be good, I promise. Okay, also really need to pick up this job stand. And um, I'm just gonna plop it right there. I am sadly gonna have to displace these beds. Um, hopefully that doesn't mess with the villager breeding. I'll go put them in the stonemason for now. Okay, so for our cleric, I'm thinking we create a tavern. I don't want it to be too close to the bakery. So maybe like, just in one from this road here and then a fair away a ways and then one, two, three, four, five. We have to make sure that we're always using odd numbers because it just works a little bit better. And then we're just gonna kind of lay out a foundation. 
Something that I kind of want to do with this foundation that's just a little bit different is offset it slightly. So I'm going to have this square here that is this way, and then it kind of shifts over one. And it, I don't know, I'm just hoping that it'll give a little bit more depth because our builds are a little flat on the foundation and that's on purpose. Like I'm, I'm aware that this is completely flat, you know, it's, it's on purpose, but I'm just thinking we can add in a little bit more shape by doing this. So I'm gonna see how it works. Okay, here is our foundation. Gotta remember to put a couple of torches inside, but in general, this is it. And <laughs> we're not actually gonna have a doorway in this one on the bottom. The villagers really like climbing things, so I'm gonna try to give this one a bit more of a porch, kind of up in this area. Um, but yeah, this looks great, I think. It's a nice big foundation. It kind of connects to this retaining wall back here. I like it. Let's get to work on the next layer. I think the hardest part of this one is kind of figuring out how exactly I want these stairs to go. This one right here is a bit awkward, and then we're gonna have like pillars that kind of awkwardly hang out <laughs> not exactly sure how this is gonna work but we're gonna see okay so here's the next layer now all I'm gonna do is build this section right here to be taller than that section not sure exactly how much taller probably about here then these two out here get to be a bit shorter one two three four yeah I love the way this looks so far now all I have to do is mark in the roof should be easy let's get to work Look at this building. I really like it right here next to the bakery. Oh, it just fixes everything so well. I tried to add a couple little traits to it to the bottom to kind of tie in the nether a little bit, some nether wart, some fungus. We can kind of continue this, I think, maybe with a little bit of the warped stuff to make it look like the ground is a little bit corrupted. I don't know something for our lovely potion brewer on the inside i've only just started the interior so it's not exactly how i want it yet i want to put like a little menu board right here with some potions and then like this is where you would order from the cleric we could put some like sea pickles as cups some pots maybe some hanging greenery in here to kind of I don't know it's very brown in here at the minute i need to kind of spice it up a little bit and then we of course have the basement i would like to eventually have a secret room down here where i can properly do some potion brewing which is kind of like automatic for our defenses in the walls um we can't do it at the minute because i am breeding the villagers so if i place several of these in an automated system in the village these lovely villagers who i am breeding will take up the job and we'll have like five clerics and i don't want that right now so we're gonna hold off um just until i have all the villagers i need we're working on a mending one right now farmers going in the library that's right you get your education that's it all right perfect all in all i'm really happy with how this little tavern turned out i'm not completely done with it yet or like completely happy but you know it's something <laughs> it's coming along i have a couple more tweaks that i'd like to do to it and there's a few things that i wish i maybe did differently like this is a little bit awkward. I wish this was down one, but all in all, cool build. I am gonna have to keep an eye and make sure the villagers know that they can't jump off of here to repeatedly take damage and die. I'm hoping they'll just have some self-preservation mechanisms built in, but if they don't, then we may have to do that. Definitely need like some carpets, some banners, some leaves, some just, just general stuff going on in the inside of there though. But for now, I think I've had enough of the tavern. There is another building project that needs to be done that I haven't been paying attention to. And it's this. We have a tower here <laughs> that I've never actually done anything with. And I think it's time that we finally go ahead and put a roof on that tower. This is probably about tall enough for a tower. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put some slabs all around the rim. And we're gonna try to get a nice like pointed roof on this one. So some areas are gonna have the castle roofs, which is what we have going on over here where it's kind of flat on top and has the crenulations. And then some towers will have actual roofs on the top. I like having things fairly unsymmetrical in this way. I think it helps out the build quite a lot. Okay, and then to make it extra thick, go around the rim with some dark oak. Then in the center parts, we are gonna have granite. Sadly, I don't have quite enough granite for this yet, but we can kind of get it started, right? How does that look? It's so much better, right? 
It looks way more finished and nice. Of course, we can add some windows in here with some iron bars, get some cool little arrow slots, but in general, I really like that that is done. It looks good. Much better, much, much better. We do need some granite though, so let me head down to the mines and get some. Hello, minions. Working hard today, I see. As usual, whoop. Oh, I do have a little bit down here already, it appears, so that's good. Get the minions started on that. I see some granite way down here in the mine, so I'm gonna go down there and just mine it all out. All right, I got a little bit of granite. This is gonna be enough for me to kind of fix up everything at the roofs at the very least, but I will have to come down and do like a mass mining session at some point. Oh, goodbye, minion. It's fine, I'll just take this up by hand. I do think that getting some windows in this tower is important, so I'm gonna scaffold up and see if I can get them in place. Um, I think this height is probably good. Not sure what that's gonna look like on the inside, but yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's definitely much better. We can do some more things to get some depth and detail, like texturing the bottom with some cobble, some andesite, some mossy, some cracked, like all the different blocks. But for now, that's pretty good. Now, I have a new and very important development in the castle wall to talk to you all about because I feel like I haven't properly talked about my plan yet. So let's head outside the castle wall so that I can introduce you to my idea for a dock area. A lot of you have mentioned that we need docks because obviously we are close to the water on both sides of this castle. So obviously it would be important for the people who live here to use the ocean to their advantage, as we have been doing with our friend Milky. However, at the moment I have a wall completely closing in my village, which makes it very safe, but you know, not very adventurous. So I was thinking we'll do a secondary wall, right? This is our first primary wall. It's very big, very tall. We do a secondary lower wall. And this lower wall allows us to keep one gate open. And that's gonna be this gate right here. See this art toy that I've made? Imagine that this is open. And you can wander in and out and go to the ocean. However, we can't leave and we can't have villagers running away. So I'm thinking to combat this, we build a second wall. This wall will kind of come along over here. Just gonna kind of try to make sure its preliminary design is good. And yeah, basically you get the idea. It's gonna come out into the water because hopefully the villagers won't wanna swim around it. Similar to what you would do with horses, to be honest. We don't need to completely enclose this once in the water. It should just do the trick like that. It will, of course, leave the castle more open to attacks on this side because our enemies can just walk in. So maybe we ought to think of something to do with that. Like maybe we have it open all the time, not like the other gates, but we have an emergency trigger. Like maybe we put sand up here or down here somehow and we click in the emergency button and then it closes up and nobody can get in and out of this gate. I think something like that would work better than having it constantly open or constantly closed. Regardless though, I am gonna go ahead and just get the preliminary markings of a temporary wall in. I think you kind of get the idea, right? And then outside in this area, we can have some docks, we can have maybe a ship out there, and we can have some like littler houses that are kind of merchant houses or the fishermen's houses. I think this has the potential to be a lot of fun. And I really like the idea of the villagers being able to actually roam a little bit more free than they currently are while still being safe, of course. Just placing some torches out here to make sure that nobody dies to zombies because we would not want that. And I also should probably lead an iron golem over in this area, just to make sure. Friends, I've had an idea. It's a very good idea and I cannot wait to share it with you because it involves redstone and I like kind of thought of it myself, which is very impressive for me. I'm a builder, okay? This doesn't happen very often. Today, we were focusing on the tavern and we also went to get a bunch of netherite. This is all leading up to us being a lot stronger. This tavern is eventually going to be used to brew potions in mass quantities. If I can think of a way to kind of get the stands away from the villagers, maybe like under here where they won't pick it up as a job, then I'll probably start like factory producing potions pretty soon. But one of the really important potions that I'd like to use is a lingering potion. We can't get those until we defeat the dragon, but keep that in mind for a moment, okay? This wall is pretty much perfectly designed to have dispensers in it. 
like, it's pretty cool, right? Watch this. We can tuck a dispenser right in here facing downwards. Now this fixes our issue of not having those, I forget how to pronounce it, matriculations, something like that. Basically where a thing is down here and I'm up there and I can't see it because they're hiding under our details. <laughs> this solves the problem because we can fire these lingering potions down to hurt any enemies that may tuck under here. Now obviously we also have the berry bushes which hurt and we're also going to have these arrow dispensers. However, I'm thinking this wall has a great design because it's gonna allow us to hide redstone. We're not even gonna know this exists. It's gonna be perfect. Great, so here we are in the wall. Let me, I kinda need to give myself a little bit of a walking ground. This is gonna be ugly for a moment, but it's temporary. So basically I need a block behind each of these. I'm gonna use oak wood just so that I know that that's where the dispenser is. Then facing into each of these dispensers, we do a repeater. That'll power the block, which will power the dispenser. Then we just connect all of these together. And then, I'm just gonna break that. Hi, doggo. <laughs> and remove this that I just made. Okay, basically I put this here. Click that, did you hear that? All of them go off. Um, Let me get some arrows to prove that this works. I don't have potions to waste at the minute. Hello, Fletcher. Could I please buy some arrows? Thank you very much. That was a lot. <laughs> We're also going to put a bunch of stashes of the fancy arrows that are like tipped in places as well. Extra crossbows, bows, anything that we need basically. We're definitely going to have access to here. But let me just put a couple arrows in each of these. These are not meant for arrows. They're going to be meant for splash potions and or lingering potions. But for now, to demonstrate, this will work. I love how well they fit into the design. It doesn't mess with the wall design at all. They look like they belong there. Like picture one in every single slot along the entire wall. It's great. We also have the option of doing things like fireballs or lava. Although that gets a little bit dangerous and, and less precise when it comes to the actual build. So we're gonna wait on the lava. Ready, I click this. And a bunch of arrows just fired directly down. Now, obviously they land kind of right here in the bushes because arrows don't splash like a splash potion would, but you get the idea, right? I mean, I feel like it's perfect. It's flawless. It's great. Let me get my arrows back, please. Thank you. So basically there will be places along here, like for example, in here, where we're gonna be able to keep some bows that are enchanted just in case a raid strikes and I'm not ready. I mean, we get patrols all the time. There was even a time in one of the episodes where I almost killed the captain. I almost did it. I, d I don't know why, it just slips my mind sometimes. And I wanna have weapons and things ready along our wall in case that does happen. While we're on the topic of defense, once again, we are still working on that tunnel that is underneath the castle that tunnels out to the windmill. I'm gonna connect this up to the observatory eventually as well, and I've also been meaning to work on this. I emptied it recently, but I still haven't expanded it. Right, here is our tunnel. I have iced over the entire thing. Look at this. So we can put a boat in here if we wanted to as well. And I'd also really like to design these sides a little bit, get it looking like, I don't know, maybe something spooky, some underground vault action, something like that. I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> and we also have to do the windmill interior. We got work to do, but <laughs> we're making progress and I'm really proud of this world. What do we have in here? Oh my gosh, I have so many buildings. Why did I do this? What? Hello? All in all, I am so incredibly proud of how this entire area is coming together. We have a few more redstone components left to do. I need to think of a redstone kind of trigger for the gate that we're going to have down here behind the tavern. I like the idea of having this open. So far, the villagers don't seem to be causing any trouble. I like the idea of having kind of boats out there, but obviously it's not safe, so I need to work out that. And I also have a redstone design all ready to go for this gateway. As you can see, I'm kind of marking in some towers out here. This is obviously not safe. It's gonna be a redstone design exactly like the diagonal one, but 
not diagonal, obviously. I am so proud of this hardcore base and how it's coming along. I can't wait for us to actually trigger a raid and try to defend it, but we have a lot of work to do before that. We gotta get potions made in our new tavern, we gotta get the arrows dispensed, we gotta get these walls built up and the tower is completely done. And I'm so excited to see it finished. It's gonna be epic. Let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see me transform next. Do we need the blacksmith? Should we work on the potions? What do we need? Do we finish the wall? We should probably finish the wall soon. That's probably a good one. Anyways, let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.